Let's talk about a couple of problems on how we determine the value of n and then use that to factor the perfect squared trinomial. So here we have three different examples. And this is essentially a two-step type of problem. They want us to find n first. All right? They want us to find the third term in the trinomial. And then after we've done that and have completed our trinomial, we then need to be able to factor this. So this is how you determine the value of n. There's a little mini formula that you do have to use. That mini formula looks like this. You take 1 half of b and then you square it. Okay, so you take half of b and you square it. Now, you might be asking, well, what in the world is b? How do you know what b is? And b comes from your definition of a quadratic equation. This is book definition of what a quadratic equation looks like. ax squared plus bx plus c. b is your middle term. b is the coefficient of the x to the first power term. So if I go over here, b is the 22, for example, a, the 19, for example, b, and the 2 thirds, for example, c. So that's what your b's are going to be. So our first step to find n, we plug into this formula. For example, a, okay, we're going to take 1 half times b. b is going to be 22. And then whatever we get when we do that, we're going to square it. So 1 half times 22. So half of 22 is equal to 11. And if we square 11, we get 121. This is your n. All right, so n is equal to 121. So if we plug in 121 for n, that would give us p squared plus 22p plus 121. We now need to wrap up this problem by factoring it. Now this is factoring the trinomial with a leading coefficient of a 1, so we can go straight to our parentheses and factor. Our first term, p squared, gives us p times p. Our last term, 121, we're looking for what factors to get 121, but adds or subtracts to get 22. We do need to keep in mind that these are perfect square binomials, so we should get the same factor in each one of these. And we literally just did 11 times 11 to get 121. So we know 11 times 11 is 121. 11 plus 11 is 22. So 11 is going to go in these spots here. Everything is positive in our trinomials, so everything is positive in our factors. You should get the same factor for both of these here, right? p plus 11 times p plus 11, which means our problem is factored, but to simplify and put it in proper notation, because these are the same exact factor, we write it like this, p plus 11 squared. So we got 121 for n, and when we factored it, we got p plus 11 squared. So for example b, we have u squared minus 19u plus n is what we're trying to find. In order to find n, we need to use our formula, which means we're taking 1 half times b. Remember, b is your middle term, the term in front of your uh, first power term. So that is half of a 19, and then we're going to square this. Well, 19 is not an even number, so you can't just perfectly take half of that. Like if it was 20, half of 20 is 10. Half of 19 uh, is actually 9.5, but we don't want to use the decimal. So we're actually going to just put the 19 over 2 and write it like this. Right? 1 half times 19 is the same thing of taking 19 and dividing it by 2. We still need to square this thing uh, in order to figure out what n is. So if we square 19 over 2, 19 times 19 is 361, and 2 times 2 is 4. So 361 over 4 is what our n is for this problem. So let's see. So n is equal to 361 over 4. So we're then going to take that and plug it into our equation. We had u squared minus 19u plus 361 over 4 because we still need to factor this. Now when we factor this, we look at our first term u squared, and we know that that needs to be u times u. 
So we're looking for what multiplies to get 361 over 4, but add or subtract to get 19. But again, backtracking and realizing we just did 19 over 2 times 19 over 2 to get 361 over 4. And if you add 19 over 2 plus 19 over 2, um, you do get this 19u here. So that is going to be our last term here, 19 over 2. Looking at our signs here, remember that these are going to be the same factors. So they're either both a plus or they're both a minus. Because we have this negative here for our middle term, we know that this is going to be negative. And again, the whole point of this is to get the same factor in these because of the type of factoring problem they are. So again, just to have proper notation here, we're going to combine these into 1 and just say that this is u minus 19 over 2 squared. Focusing on the last example, example C is x squared minus 2 thirds x plus n. Again, our first step is to find n, which means we need to plug it into the formula. So the formula is 1 half times b. b here is going to be 2 thirds. And then whatever we get when we do that, we're going to square it. Now, we need to multiply these fractions together. So remember, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So 1 times 2 gives us 2, over 2 times 3 gives us 6. Uh, but 2 over 6 can be simplified. They have a common factor of 2. So 2 over 6 is actually 1 third. We still need to square this in order to get n. So 1 third squared or 1 third times 1 third gives us 1 over 9. So that means, for example, c, our n is going to be 1 over 9. Now, if we plug that in into our trinomial here, because we need to factor this, right, this is what we get. So again, we're going to factor this, and because it's a perfect squared uh, uh, problem here, we know that these, these factors are both going to be the same. So x squared tells us x times x. And we need to keep in mind for our last positions here, what did we use to get that 1 ninth? What times what was 1 ninth? Well, we did one-third times one-third, right? So one-third is going to be our magic number that works over here. And looking at our signs, remember, since these factors are both the same, they're either both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative. Because we have the negative term here, we know that this is going to be our minus-minus combination. And since they are the same exact factor, we can combine them into one, saying x minus one-third squared, since we have two of them.